Hello, dear one, to tell us I am of the stars. So, another thing that's been happening that I can't peg or place, that I can only report on it, has to do with changes in the astral stories. Uh, I've seen two cases very recently of astral stories that have played out with a, a great number of people in them like a, a skit or play of major proportions. They only last maybe 15 minutes, but they're involving a rise to the conscious mind, from the unconscious mind to the conscious mind, in terms of staging a reality that's still negative, but more, much more, retaining much more conscious astral matter, uh, to the point where it's not like a uh, total gut brain thing. It's more like what seems reasonable to the, to the mental minds of people of old earth, you know? Not in a healing sort of way, but just the reasonable thing that we've been like pegging our hearts down to in terms of what we consider to be reality at the very end of the age of darkness that just passed. <laughs> like the idea, for instance, of crime. The idea of crime and punishment, which is not what I call optimal for New Earth, but I'd say for New Earth what we really want is ways to, to help people to, to clear their samskaras so that they have no need to express themselves in ways counter to the good of everybody. And, uh, and there are many other things like that, like this issue of money and uh, uh, competition and capitalism and taking money from other people so that our families can have more money. Hardly the optimal thing, you know. The optimal thing would be to work for the good of everybody somehow and in the same way make at the same time to make um, a, a wonderful living for ourselves and our, our loved ones. And so these are some of the many adjustments and peggings down of the heart energy that have happened as the age of darkness proceeded. These compromises, um, because of the, the lack of light, these compromises of social concerns and social issues that are concomitant with the compromises we've made in our own auric field, in our own electromagnetic field, to retain our vital functions and still function on earth as human beings during this time and which we're now springing out of as is society <laughs> so to get back to the topic of the astral skits they played out one played out in a legal context with like a, a major cast of characters and uh and uh it was very plausible it seemed and very like reasonable and very compromising to the heart but but very typical of the social uh, milieu that we've been experiencing uh, on television, in the media, and actually in real life too. So more conscious. And then last night there was like this massive uh, influx or invasion of, of, of um, before the noise in the wall that shifted, right? <laughs> I was just sitting there meditating and these things, these visions went, went flying around. <laughs> what a meditation, I'll tell you. So I was sitting in the desert, you know, in the room at night meditating for some hours and these, this whole crowd, like a regiment of beings that would, that, um, came in all around, up above in the in the floor, up above, all around the space and everywhere, and acted out a skit around me that had to do with me, you know, uh, and, and that wasn't my speciality as far as skits are concerned. I was not the producer, <laughs> and I didn't agree with it any more than the other, you know, the other skit. Now, the legal skit. Now these skits. Uh, we, you know, we as, as humankind right now, we need to recognize what is astral, even if it seems reasonable, and what is physical right now. We need to act in the physical realm on physical phenomena and, 
and not act on these astral stories, which are really, it's like a fledgling bird that's just starting to get its little wing feathers, pin feathers on its wings, you know, and flap its wings and develop its wing muscles, hoping to one day fly. We're like that right now. We're like a fledgling um, bird. <laughs> and these stories that we're creating are just the beginning of the vast co-creative ability that we have for new new life on new earth. <laughs> I, I don't have any idea how that's going to end up because it's up to humankind to figure it out, which is pretty cool. <laughs> so this second skit uh, had two parts. And the one part there was like a giant batch of people there and they had um, a very left brain agenda with regard to me. I didn't like it. <laughs> and so, but it was eminently reasonable to them. I understood that. And uh, when, when this vision left, this astral story, which seemed very uh, plausible and, and realistic, uh, left, the people, they thought that they envisioned themselves as being on the floor above me in the motel room, right? A, a ton of them, like 20. And I could actually hear the, the roof of my room vibrating and moving with the sound of their rushing footsteps as they all sped out at the same time, right? But, so I'm going, how true could this be, you know? So naturally I want to test it. So I went to the window and I looked out and, and it was very sleepy out there. There was nothing going on. <laughs> it was just an astral story that was very plausible and realistic. And the funny thing is, still left up in the room at that time, were, were some other people that weren't in that like group that was leaving, a different group of people all together that stuck around for another hour or so with a, with a separate skit, a separate agenda, right? Uh, the motel was very crowded, <laughs> astrally speaking. And so, and so then a batch of them left, right? I heard, oh, this is it. I heard the sharp rap or knock on my door. I'm going, this is a little too out of it. I don't think I'm going to have, maybe it's the next door, the guy next door that's they're rapping on. I'm not answering the door. <laughs> I should have had the nerve, but I didn't, you know. So I just sat there. I didn't hear anybody talking or anything. It was just a rap on the door. Before that, like the, the beating of feet on, on the ceiling of my, of my room. Then those pet people left, and there were only a few more people up there in the room, walking around like for hours. <laughs> my guess is that those two people were the people that rented the room upstairs and everybody else was in astral fiction. It was a wild evening <laughs> in the astral plane. <laughs> very, very realistic uh, uh, sound effects. Uh, I, I remember years ago I was coming out of a karate class and I... Um, I stepped out onto the street, uh, the sidewalk, and I saw on the street, uh, going away from me, down the street, a uh, pickup truck with three young people, teenagers, who had just practiced karate in it. And somehow or other, uh, this is like 20 years ago, I saw uh, a picture that was fully formed, but not totally fleshed in like a fade. It was a 50% fade, you know, fade out. And I saw, but very clearly saw the picture of that truck turning left at the, at the intersection and being hit by a car coming in the opposite direction. And a millisecond after I saw that, I saw like a rerun. I saw the, um, the truck hitting past me and away from me with the children in it and the same thing happened over again but this time it was a fully fleshed out physical reality so what I had seen was what you might call a precursor dream or uh, it was like a preview of the reality that was about to take place and it, at the time it, it actually uh, unsettled me very much because I began to get the feeling way back then that time is very flexible and like uh, creatable, uh, that physical events are like creatable, like, like some kind of astral phenomenon compelled that, that identical scene to occur, you know, or that 
time had, f had flipped forward and then flipped back again, rolled back and was proceeding again, duplicating itself. <laughs> and, and it wasn't until very recently that something happened to me, uh, about m middle of that, about a couple of weeks ago, that something happened to me along those lines. And I've mentioned it a little in a previous, um, in a previous blog in a pre pre previous video, it had to do with uh, driving along the freeway at twilight and someone, uh, a car suddenly appeared behind me and veered off to the right beside me and, and hit a guardrail. But, and pieces of the car were flying over me and behind, ro the car was rolling around behind me and I wasn't, I was not hit or injured uh, or, you know, nothing at all happened to me. But I could look behind me and I could see the cars, the other cars behind me had all stopped on the freeway. And so, so I thought, huh, you know, I better find a way to dial 911 because, if, you know, this person rolled like that in that car, they're bound to be done for. So I went and found a, a person who, who could, out in the country, who could dial 911. Then I came back on the freeway to help out. And the whole scene was missing. Everything was gone. Now, it's, you know, it was, I would say, 75% fleshed in as physical reality. I, you know, I can't explain this. All I can say is that uh, reality itself must be changing. I don't know if you've had something like that happening. Like, I'm in a different dimension from the catastrophes that are going on, you know. I was very weird. <laughs> and um, the weirdest part was that it seemed so, it seemed to me to be the creation of someone else. Someone else who believed that they were driving that, that pickup truck and who believed they were crashing into the guardrail. But when push came to shove, I mean, it was a very real experience for someone in an alternate timeline. Um, or who had merged temporarily with my timeline and then flipped back out of it again. Because when I came back, there was nothing there. And, and I waited a day, and then I went back, and I looked really carefully. I summoned all my courage, and I didn't. I looked for dented uh, guardrail. I looked for skid marks on the, on the pavement. I looked for any sign of, like, uh, commotion in the median strip or any pieces of parts that that weren't that 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 were lying around and the only thing I saw was just this tiny little uh, glimmering uh, sliver of glass or or maybe it was um, a can or something like that not there was no sign of, of such an accident so so someone had created that accident apparently with their minds almost real but not real you see and so you know I'm speechless <laughs> so if something like this is coming up for you just know that you're not alone <laughs> our our reality our astral reality is becoming more like the physical I think and as it clears and becomes more positive I think we'll begin to see instantaneous manifestation of these positive uh, realities that, that we as a humankind uh, co-create. So, y'all take care. Love you lots. Oh yes, postscript. Something else, I think a very positive thing that I've noticed in the last week or so is that people are starting to uh, to branch out when these these astral subconscious stories start? After a while, the story can suddenly shift or get retold in a more positive light or different from a different perspective by a batch of different people, many different people contributing. So um, that's good. It indicates the ability to get off of one subconscious or unconscious track and onto perhaps a little more conscious track 
as as a collective, as a collective mind uh, becomes more mature and more clear. Huh. This business about uh, someone else's reality, like the reality of the the um, probably very traumatic reality of the crash on the freeway and the roll of the rolling car like that, uh, that that another person such as me just sort of passes through or around or into and out of without being scathed is called a walk through. Somebody else in their reality walks through your reality. So in this case the the person that 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 had the car crash apparently sometime in some timeline or dimension or was about to have it or was having it at the same time in a different timeline or dimension walked through my rather placid highway uh, touring experience <laughs> he gave me quite a an adrenaline uh, surge <laughs> so and this walking through that happened it was distinctly different from the the recent time in the restroom when I I s sort of saw like the energetic shape of of a person being 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 raped there in the bathroom. You remember that blog? Uh, because in in that blog, in that experience, it was just the energies, the shifting transparent energies of electromagnetic field that I sensed. I could see those or feel those actually. So in this other case, the case of the car that rolled. Uh, maybe because the hour was twilight, the, the visual experience was completely different. I actually saw very clearly and solidly the car. And the whole experience, although it was happening at such a fast clip that, and, uh, that I just couldn't, um, you know, it was too fast for like the shutter by shutter sensation of the eyes, but it was it was within the range of the action-packed thriller on television, you know, that kind of, that kind of viewing. Only 3D. <laughs> different. Very different, like, experiences lately of astral stories and uh, um, warps in the timeline and the dimensions and so forth. Spooky, but it's just... Um looks like a yucca plant that has fallen over. Doesn't it look like a like a um, one of those children's stories with the giant monster ants? Ooh. <laughs>